Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist, and today I'll be joined once again by Dr. Nicole Sertica to talk about why leg extensions are actually quite functional and should be incorporated as part of a comprehensive rehab program for individuals who have had an ACL reconstruction. So what does it mean for an exercise to be functional? Well, it's actually a poorly defined term as different individuals will give different definitions. Although it's often used to discuss exercises that replicate or look similar to movements being performed on the court or field. There are commonly prescribed exercises normally considered to be functional that don't look anything like what's done on the field or court. And as we'll soon see, looks can often be deceiving. Let's examine the hop tests that are commonly used to assess if someone is ready to safely return to sport after an ACL reconstruction. These are what many people would consider functional tests. A study by Wren et al. in 2018 took patients who were on average seven months post ACL reconstruction and had them perform a single leg hop test. They were said to have achieved symmetry if they were able to hop at least 90% as far on the surgical side as they were able to hop on the non-surgical side. They found that the patients who were able to achieve symmetry did not hop as far on either limb compared to healthy athletes. That means the athletes who are post-ACL reconstruction were only able to achieve symmetry by underperforming on their non-surgical side. Furthermore, Wren and colleagues demonstrated that symmetric patients shifted loading to the hip, increasing hip flexion angles, moments, and energy absorption. That means that the patients who achieved symmetry on the hop test shifted load out of their surgical knee and into that hip as a form of compensation. Other studies by Oberlander et al. and Orishimo et al. also showed an offloading of the surgical knee and increased loading at the hip and ankle in patients after ACL reconstruction. Offloading the affected knee might sound advantageous, but we'll discuss why that might not be the case in a moment. Even in a simpler task like a bodyweight squat, there are compensations that occur that we might not be able to see with the naked eye, which was highlighted in a paper by Susan Sigurd et al. in 2018. Of course, we can all see and recognize the interlimb compensation that occurs early after an ACL reconstruction when an athlete will shift off of their surgical leg and onto the un uninvolved side. However, at about five months after surgery, that compensation changes from being interlimb being intralimb, meaning that instead of a shift occurring from side to side, the shift occurs within the same leg. And now, instead of the surgical knee being used and loaded normally, that load is taken up by the hip and ankle. And we can't necessarily visualize that shift. So why does the shift in load from the knee to hip and ankle matter if the hop and squat look good? Well, the compensatory strategy is the result of the quads not being strong enough to perform their primary function of active knee extension or controlled knee flexion. This is a problem because strong quads are really important for sports performance and for reducing the risk of re-injury. In fact, the Delaware Oslo ACL cohort showed that quad strength is the most predictive factor for who will go on to have a second ACL injury. The authors state, of the individual components in the return to sport test battery, quadriceps strength deficit prior to return to level one sport was a significant predictor of a knee re-injury with a 3% reduced re-injury rate for every one percentage point increase in strength symmetry. Getting strong quads after an ACL reconstruction is vital. If an athlete does not have strong enough quads to control knee flexion when they are landing, decelerating, and changing direction, then they end up utilizing more of a hip strategy to compensate. This means that they'll land on more of an extended knee with increased hip flexion, just like the patients in the Wren et al. study. 
The problem with this is that ACL injuries occur when the knee is in this more extended position. In other words, we need the quads to get strong so they can help to absorb and counteract the forces going through the knee during cutting, landing, and decelerating activities. If the quads are unable to do this job, the body will compensate by having the hips take over. And this isn't an ideal movement strategy for performance or for re-injury rates. So we need the quads to get strong, really strong. They're critical for successful rehab. Now, can't we just do that with functional exercises like squats and lunges? Not necessarily. More complex movements, such as hopping, squatting, and lunging, grant the opportunity for compensations to occur, whether we can visualize those compensations or not. An isolated movement, like a leg extension, takes away that opportunity and provides a better training stimulus for the specific adaptation we're seeking, strong quads. We can utilize some basic biomechanical principles to help demonstrate just how functional isolated leg extensions really are. This information is taken from the blog of Eric Mira, the science PT, and we'll link his website in the description. When an athlete goes to change direction, they must first decelerate in the direction they are currently moving, pivot, and then accelerate in the new direction. When the athlete steps into the ground to begin that deceleration, the ground pushes back into their leg with about an equal and opposite force. This is Newton's third law. Although there is certainly a vertical force vector component acting on the knee, the ground reaction force also generates a strong horizontal force vector. Now let's take a look at a split squat exercise. Here, the external forces acting through the knee are primarily vertical in nature. In short, the forces acting through the knee during a split squat do not necessarily replicate the forces acting through the knee during a more sport-specific movement. If we take a look at a leg extension, however, we can see that the forces acting through the knee are going to be more similar to those produced during a sport-specific task. Therefore, the leg extension exercise not only applies an isolated and specific training stimulus for the adaptation we are seeking, it also better replicates the actual forces acting through the knee during sport-specific movements than many other exercises that are considered more functional do. In short, the quads need to be really strong after ACL reconstruction. Standard rehab exercises and tests like squatting and hop tests grant the opportunity for compensations to occur which means that we may not really be loading the quads as much as we think. Now we can try to make the argument for exercises like front squats, hack squats, and split squats that emphasize a positive shin angle, and they may be part of a good comprehensive program, but in order to be absolutely sure that we're loading the quads adequately, it might be a good idea to include exercises that isolate the quads like the leg extensions. So thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about this topic, head to Nicole's website and her blog. We'll leave that link in the description. You can also head over to Eric Mira's blog, which we'll leave in the description. We also have another video that we'll link up above that you can check out that talks about why leg extensions are actually safe after an ACL reconstruction. And in the next video, we'll show you how to implement these into your routine as you recover from that ACL reconstruction. Now, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure to head over to E3 Rehab where you can learn more about us, check out our podcast, blogs, programs, and more. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Peace.